Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Pillars of Eternity. It's been a long time coming for this game. I, I, I said I was going to try to start playing it sometime at the end of February. It's now the end of April. So it's been a little while, but uh, Pathfinder ran a little, a little long, that series. Longer than I thought it was going to run. Loved it, but uh, it did run longer than I thought. Um, but I did promise somebody that I would be playing Pillars next. Uh, to that somebody, I don't know if you're watching, but if you are, here we go. I hope you enjoy the playthrough. For those of you who are joining, who don't know me, uh, hi, I'm Heliax. And, uh, this is going to be a franchise playthrough, so we're gonna play this and Pillars of Eternity 2. Uh, and the deal is, it's not a deal, but the situation is, is I've played Pillars of Eternity 1 before. Um, but I've never played Pillars of Eternity 2 before, and I didn't want to just play that one because the characters are connected, the games are connected, uh, so I wanted the whole story to be up on the channel. So we're going to play through Pillars of Eternity 1 now, um, and the DLC, which I, I never played the DLC for Pillars of Eternity 1, so it should be fun. Um, now obviously, since it's not blind, I will know things, uh, so be prepared for it to be just a different... A different feel, different style than my other playthroughs. Um, anything else I need to discuss? Not really. Let's just jump into it, huh? I love this this intro screen. It's a it's beautiful, gorgeous. Uh, curiously, is this would this have been the intro screen if I didn't have the white marches? Now I don't have them installed yet. I do own them, but I is this always going to be how the intro is? I don't know. Uh, let's go ahead. New game. So the thing about Pillars of Eternity 1 is it is real-time with pause, and I am terrible. Just horrible with real-time with pause, I feel like. Um, now, granted, this is probably the only game I've ever played with real-time with pause, so that you know, that could be something. So we're not going to play on easy, because I'm, I'm not that big of a scaredy cat. Uh, hard, though. Do we want to try hard? Infinity Engine Veterans. That's not me. We're looking for a challenge. Mm, I think we're gonna stick with normal. If it's too easy, if it if it gets too easy, we could always bump up the difficulty. I assume, uh, but we're gonna start with normal. We're not gonna turn expert mode on, and we're not gonna turn trial of iron on. So we're just going to do a normal playthrough here. Let's go ahead and accept, and let's uh, watch the little intro here. Obsidian Entertainment presents. Pillars of Eternity. I love how atmospheric this part is. It's beautiful. Druids have a wide variety of area of area effect offensive spells. They also have the ability to transform into an animalistic. Five wagons grope blindly for the path on a starless night. Their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them, where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. Okay, so we are headed to the Gilded Vale, where we are apparently... Well, I don't know if we're going there to do that, but... The Lord is giving out free land, essentially, to new settlers. So that's nice of him. But we got sick, which isn't so nice for us. Alright, so our characters. So, first thing to select is a gender. So we have male and female. Uh, so it goes through here. The, the place of men in society varies from culture to culture. Cultures like a deer and the direwood place them at the forefront of military politics and heavy labor. Among the tribes of Nasatik, men perform many 
of the homesteading and organizational duties. In Irglampath and Zemet, men and women have more fluid social roles. In all societies, there are exceptions to the rules, and men can be found in a wide variety of, st of stations and professions. And female, a woman's role in Eora, is largely dependent on where she is from. In the Adir Empire, uh, Valian republics and direwood women occupy many domestic, educational, and organizational roles. They are the primary hunters, soldiers, and leaders of the tribes of Nasatek and Ir Glenfath and Zamet. Women and men have equal roles uh, or more fluid social roles, and uh, all societies have exceptions. We are going to be playing as a female today, today, this series, and our races. So let's go ahead and read through them all. I already know what we're going to play, but let's read through them all anyway. So, humans, commonly called folk, are the most common race in the Direwood, the Adir Empire, Old Valia, and the Valian Republics. Though not as large or as not as large as the towering Am 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 Amua, humans are known for their strength and willpower. Plus one resolve, plus one might. And then we have the Amua. The mighty Amua are the largest of the Kith races and are commonly found in or near oceans. Though not truly aquatic, they have an affinity for water, water and many of their civilizations, such as uh, Rabotai, are basic, based on naval dominance. They are known for their unparalleled strength, plus two might. We have dwarves. By virtue of land covered and number of colonies settled, dwarves are the most well-traveled race in the world. They are commonly found in the Direwood, the Valian Republics, and almost any colonized land. Dwarves are known for their great strength and tenacity, plus two might, minus one dex, and plus one con. Elves. Elves are the dominant race in Irglanfath, and the white that wins, and are extremely common in the Direwood and Adir. Elves are known for their speed and intelligence, as well as commonly isolationist nature. A commonly isolationist nature, so plus one dex, plus one perception. Then we have the Orlin. This is what I played in the in my playthrough, my original playthrough of the game. I played an Orlin. I think they're really cool. Orlins are the smallest of the Kith races, though many cultures don't consider them to be civilized at all. Also, also notable for their large ears, two-toned skin, and hirsute bodies, Orlins are commonly found in Irglampath, the Zemet Plains, and parts of the Direwood. They are known for their mental intensity and sharp senses, plus one resolve, minus one white might, and plus two perception. And finally, we have Godlike. The Godlike are children of the Kith, civilized races, who have been blessed with physical with physical aspects associated with the gods, though some do not consider it a blessing. These aspects may take many forms and often come with mystical powers. Aberrant head shapes are typical and godlikes are unable to wear protective headgear, headgear as it is impossible or near impossible to find anything that fits. Because of the unusual nature and their inability to reproduce, godlike are often viewed with fear and wonder, plus one dex and plus one int in intellect. So we are going to be playing a godlike. Um, I think they're really cool sounding. And with the class we're going to play, these stats will hopefully be, be, be pretty useful as well. Plus I found a picture. That's, that's mainly the issue, or not the issue, the deciding factors. I found a, ni a nice portrait that I want to use, or a couple that I need to choose from. Um, so next, we are going to be a godlike. So godlikes have four sub-races. We have the death godlikes who look freaky. Death godlikes are the most distrusted of their kind. Strange growths cover their eyes, or in some cases, entire faces, giving them a sinister appearance. The growths are transparent for the godlike, but opaque from the outside, hiding their features. Death godlikes are commonly killed at birth because many cultures consider them to be harbingers of doom. That's, that's a rough start right there. Death's usher. When death Godlikes attack an enemy with 25% or less endurance. Their damage is increased. That's kind of cool. And then we have fire godlikes. The bodies of the fire godlike often resemble hot metal, burnt wood, or stone with harmless flames that erupt from the cracks in their skin. Fire godlikes are object of both reverence and fear in the Dead Fire Archipelago. Many locals believe they have the power to awaken volcanoes, or that killing one will cause a volcano to awaken. In the Direwood, fire godlikes are often seen as a sign of the blessing of Magrin, goddess of war and fire. We get battle forged. When reduced below 50% endurance, fire godlikes glow like metal in a forge, gaining damage reduction and doing a small amount of fire damage. 
to any creature who hits them in melee. Nice. We got the moon godlike. Moon godlike are the most tolerated of the godlike. While their skin tone and a large moon-like growth on their foreheads may be strange to some, their appearances are generally considered more palatable than by the other kin. Sailors have many beliefs about moon godlike and their propensity to bring luck, though there is little agreement as to what kind of luck they tend to bring. Get Silver Tide ability. Every encounter, when reduced below 75, 50, and 25% endurance, moon godlike generate waves of healing moonlight that restores endurance to them and their allies. Man, that sounds really good, doesn't it? And last but not least, we have the nature godlike. So nature godlike appear to be a fusion of human and animal features, often covered by plants, moss, or fungi. This has led to the common stigma that they are diseased and many are killed at birth because of it. Many druidic orders have a keen sense in nature godlike, or interest in nature godlike, because of their general curiosity as to how souls occupy animals, plants, and stones. Wellspring of Life grants a bonus to might constitution and dexterity when endurance is below 50%. So I'm actually not sure which one we're going to play yet. It's between fire and, God and death, because I have two portraits that I think both are cool looking. So, I don't know which one we're going to pick yet. Maybe death, maybe fire. We'll have to, I'm still thinking about it. But we'll, we'll stick with fire for now, just because. Oh, we can pick body type. Oh, that's cool. Uh, human or elf? I think we'll just stick with the, the human one. Next. Class. So the class we're going to play, we're going to be playing a priestess or a priest. Priests are devotees of Aeora's deities and practitioners of religious magic. While all priests dedicate themselves to specific gods, priests, priests' power is actually derived from their personal beliefs. In contrast to most paladins, priests tend to focus on philosophy, teaching, and the relationship of religious organizations with common folk. The reception of priests in any given part of the world depends largely on how their god is revered or reviled by the people who live there. Our starting ability is a Holy Radiance. Holy Radiance generates a modest amount of endurance for allies around the priest. Any enemy vessels caught in the area take burn damage and may be frightened. Over the course of the game, the power of this ability may shift based on the reputations the priest gains relative to the behavior that are preferred by his or her deity. We get access to spells. Priests have access to a variety of support and some offensive-oriented spells. Every two levels, priests automatically gain access to an additional set of spells. Initially, their spells can be cast a limited number of times per rest. As priests gain power, their weaker spells eventually shift to per-encounter use. Plus 1 to athletic scores and plus 2 to lore scores. And our endurance is 36 plus 12 divided by our level. Very low endurance. Our health is low as well. Health or 4 times endurance. Our accuracy, 20 plus 3, divided by level, very low. And our deflection, 15, low. So all of our defensive abilities are low. But we are going to need to be a priest. So this is going to be us. Next. And now we have to choose a deity. So we have Bereth here, called Bereth and Edrin, and Serono and Valian. It is the god of cycles, of doors, and of life and death itself. People commonly place or carve the figure of Bareth in doorways, windows, and other portals from one place to another. Bareth has a relatively small priesthood, in part because it does not speak often to them. However, Bareth has many, many petitioners and occasional followers. Favored dispositions, stoic and rational. Disfavored dispositions, passionate and cruel. Okay, so stoic and rational. I think this is what's going to decide whether or not we are fire or death. If we be death, if we be death. If we're going to be death, a death godlike, we're going to worship Bereth, because it's the god of, god of death. I know, original. And then we have uh, Aeothos. Aeothos is the Adiran name for the god of light, redemption, and rebirth. While worship of a a a a Aeothos is still popular in, Adir in the Adir Empire and Red Ceres, Red Ceres, the faith is outlawed in most cities in the, of the Direwood, Direwood due to events of the Saints War in which Saint Saint Wadewin who had supposedly become a living vessel for Aeothus attempted to invade the Direwood before being destroyed at the gates of Halgut Citadel or Halgut Citadel Aeothus has not been heard from since 
end is presumed dead by most. So this guy's a big, big player in the, in the world, if I remember correctly. Benevolent and honest, we're not going to be that. This is the other option. Oop, just smacked my mic on accident. We have Magron. Magron is the goddess of war and fire, and hers is the most populous following in Direwood. Magron's faithful are rank and file soldiers, as well as officers, tacticians, and strategists. Additionally, they create devices used in warfare, especially those made in the forge, such as weapons and armor. Her priests view battle and warfare as inevitable human activities that should be pursued with single-minded efficiency. Consequently, she is not a goddess of battle lust or celebration as much as military ex excellence and passionate discipline, aggressive and clever, and disfavors diplomatic and passionate. So both of my choices disfavor passion. This one disfavors cruel. This one disfavors diplomacy. Stoic and rational. Let's see what these two are. Skane, because maybe we'll change our mind. Known also as the Quiet Slave, is the god of secret hatred, resentment, and violent rebellion. He is usually depicted as a small, bold man, covered in lashed scars, whose ears and nose have been cut off. He, appear, he appears outwardly submissive and with downcast eyes. However, his eyes glitter black with quiet hatred, and his fist is clenched. He is known to manifest in a horrific inca incarnation known as the Effigy, to followers desperate enough to perform certain unspeakable rites. In Direwood, Skane's faithful often double as torturers and executioners, executioners delighting in the fall of high-status prisoners. Favors deception and cruel... Deceptive and cruel, benevolent and aggressive is disfavored. And then we have Whale. Whale is the god of dreams, secrets, mysteries, and revelations. Inscrutable even to the other gods, Whale has no determinate gender or consistent appearance. Its symbol is the eye, though the look and number of, eye of the eye, number of the eyes often change. People pray to Whale both to protect their secrets as well as to unravel the mysteries in front of them. Followers of Whale are known for many strange and unusual practices, possibly for good reason, possibly for no reason at all. Deceptive and clever. I think we're going to go with Bereth. We're going to be stoic and rational. Or aggressive and clever. Actually, you now that I'm thinking about it, I think we're going to go with this. We're going to be aggressive and we're going to be we're going to be clever. And anti-passionate. <laughs> Passion without aggression. A regression without passion. Interesting. Actually, I don't know. This is tough. This is tough. Let's go with Magron. Well, I guess we'll look, we'll decide with the portrait. We'll we'll go with this for now. Okay. So for what we need as a priest. So I did a little bit of research on this, but I also forgot most of the research I did on this because it was a few days ago. I know I'm horrible. Anyway, so from what I understand, we want decks, a lot of decks, because the more decks we have, the more spells we can cast in an encounter. So we want decks. How far, how high can we go? All the way to 19. Is that how, how any of them can go? Oh, we can go down. We're at 11. Uh, what about like our gold star one? Okay, 19 is as high as we can go. So... I think we're going to forego might. Actually, I don't know. Let's... We want that action speed. We're going to put 19 in decks. I'm going all in. I'm going to dump con. Do you want to dump it that much? I'm a little scared of dumping it. I didn't think we could dump it that much. <laughs> so con was at 10. Let's dump it to 6. Because in theory, she's never going to be hit. Right? In theory. So then we can get into intellect up to 18 and put resolve up to 14. How's that look? Do we need perception? Probably want some, probably want some of that, right?
It's maybe something like that. How's that look? Don't really know. Perception has accuracy. Accuracy is important, isn't it? It feels like everything's important. Because we don't need that. We do get some fortitude back with that. And we could dump this down. If we do it to there, we could go something like this. But then we have no con. Is that smart? I don't know. I don't know enough about the game to make that decision. So I think we're going to keep it like this. I mean, this already feels very low for me. Like coming from a Pathfinder and D&D background. It's tough. It's uh, one of the more difficult things I feel like is getting that down with this game since it's very different from everything else. We're going to go with this for now. 19 dex, 17 intellect. Intellect represents the character's logic and reasoning. In interactions, it can be used for deduction, sudden realization, and problem solving. In combat, it contributes to the will, defense, and influences duration of area of effect for all abilities and talents. That sounds good, right? Durations is good. Mm -hmm. And we're aggressive and cunning, so... This takes care of the cunning, and yeah, I don't know if dexterity represents aggression. Probably not. Alright, so our culture. Adir. The Adir Empire is currently the largest and most powerful force in this part of the world. It is centered around the equator and has a tropical climate, though the Empire has colonies in numerous areas of the world. Greater Adir is at its heart and houses the majority of its human and elven nations, plus one to resolve. That could be good. The Deadfire Archipelago, which this is where the second game takes place, as in case the title of it didn't give it away, consisting of the nation of Nasatek, dozens of Amawa settlements, and hundreds of lawless pirate-infested islands that stretch along the southern sea, Deadfire is home to boreal dwarves, Amawa, and a mixed variety of other races. Deadfire Archipelago is the last stop for anyone headed east. A multitude of monstrous sea creatures infest the ocean beyond, making travel virtually impossible. Plus one dex, so that's pretty good. Get dex up to 20. We've got the, uh, the Zamet Plains. Located on the northeast of Air Glamfath, the Zamet Plains are a large expanse of fertile savannas that are extensively farmed by humans and Orland residents. The Zamet culture is one of the oldest in the world, though one of the least imperialistic, having spread out little over the past several thousand years. Old Valia. Intellect plus one, that could be good too. Okay, big old mace, I like that. Once the crown jewel of the southern seas, Old Valia is now the crumbled remnants of an empire of warring merchant nations. Counting many humans and dwarves among their ranks, the Old Valian uh, countries are still forced forces to be reckoned with, and are proud of their rich cultural heritage. Rautai, plus one the Khan, dominated by the Amua nation of Rabatai, the gulf itself is, is host to a number of nations, most of them Amua, Orlan, and Dwarven. Though these countries are relatively young, they are some of the most advanced colonial settlements in the east. The gulf is a land of riches and resources for those who can take them, though the entire coast is often pummeled by violent storms. The Living Lands, plus one the Might. The Living Lands is the mountainous region of a large northern island renowned for its diversity of plant and animal life. Its weather is unpredictable and its ecosystem vary dramatically from valley to valley. The Living Lands are home to an assortment of races and a variety of colonial and independent settlements. And the White That Wins. Perception. Large cracked southern expanse a large cracked southern expanse of polar ice. The white that wins is home to the pale, el pale elves and small colonies of daring explorers, outcasts, and adventurers. While virtually no plant life grows in the white, it is home to many hardy species of dangerous animals that forage from the sea or prey upon each other to survive. Okay, so I think we are between these two. So, I, oh wait, no, I think I want this one. No, yeah, this is what I was thinking. <laughs> You guys did not see what just went on in my head there, but it made sense. Old Valia, we want this plus one int. And I like the idea that we're from this sort of ruined civilization almost. Gets our intel intellect up one more. Stats are looking okay, I think. I don't know. Background. So 
What is our background? We could be an aristocrat. You've lived your life amongst the nobility. Your days have been marked by lavish meals and extravagant parties. Your conversations peppered with talk of, of pedigree and bloodlines. That could be good. Be a colonist. You're part of a group that founded a fledgling colony in a distant land. A drifter. You never quite fit in, no matter where you go. Each new town is just a place to rest briefly before moving on to the next. You're more comfortable on the road, traveling the world. Stealth and mechanics. Laborer, your life has been spent in the study of your of your craft. You trained, prepared, hoping to hone your skill and ply your trade. It could be a merchant. This makes sense with Olvalia. You've traded goods from all over the world, pairing items with buyers of all kind. Lore and mechanics. An artist, you've always felt driven to express yourself creatively. The structure and rigid control of other pursuits have never satisfied in the same way. A dissident. You've made name. You've made a name for yourself as a troublemaker, disrespect and disrespect for authority, and a lack of care, regardless regarding the rules and recurring themes in your life, or recurring themes in your life. Stealth and lore. A hunter. You live for the thrill of the chase, whether for glory or for sustenance. You have made your living taking the lives of wild creatures. A mercenary. Blade and battle is your way of life. You solve your problems by pulling your wep pulling out your weapon and applying force. Athletics and lore, or a slave. You have never known freedom. Shackles and chains have bound your existence, and someone has told you what to do your entire life. Athletics and survival. I kind of like colonist, to be honest. I think colonist is cool, but I don't think it matches what we're going for. I want to be kind of like an outcast, maybe a drifter. Let's be a drifter. Yeah. You know, we never really fit anywhere. We're a godlike, distrusted everywhere we go. I think either if, if I go fire or death, both of them are pretty distrusted wherever they go, or feared. Okay, so here we decide our portrait. So we're going to go to the end here. There are a couple of good godlike ones in here, but... So this is the fire one I was thinking of. I think it looks really nice. And that's the, the death one. I also think that one looks really nice. I think we're going to go fire. I think we're going to stay fire. I like it. Plus, I liked the sort of connection that it has with uh, the Dead Fire Archipelago. Maybe once we get there, our us being a fire godlike is going to make it seem... Uh, add some flavor to the game. All right. So let's go ahead, pick our primary colors. So primary color, I think... I think we kind of had what we what I want already. Um, orange and red, that sounds good. Actually, let's just go with my channel colors, black and yellow. Where's yellow? Is that yellow? That's yellow. Let's switch these around. There we go. Yeah, let's go with that. I like it. And then we get different head shapes. I like the first one, even though none of them really match what we have going on here. Well, that one, the horns kind of match. Huh. What do we have for the, uh, for the, for these godlikes? Go back here, go here, appearance. What kind of faces we have here? Okay, none of those look super impressive either, like what we have on that picture. That's fine. I think we're going to stick with the fire one. Oh, I forgot. What, what did we get? Battle forged. Reduce below 50%. Get damage reductions and de fire damage to people. Damage is increased. That's probably a better one. That's, is that a better one? I don't know. If we're at 25%, we're pretty much dead with our, with our con. Let's we'll stick with what we have. I like this. Go ahead... What are the, uh... That's a fire one. That one's pretty nice looking. I like that one too, to be honest. But no, we're going to stick with my custom one. Because I think it looks really nice. Oops. There we go. Alright, and we need to switch you guys around. Next. Alright, voice. Hmm. 
I've got this. Let's go. Fiery or feisty sounds like a good one. Quick and quiet. Yeah, I'll lead the way. Keeping quiet. Hmm. Follow me. Yeah! I'll take a peek. Well, now I am leader of the group. <clears throat> the better part of valor. Hmm. I shall lead us. Yeah! Shh. I'm here. My eyes are peeled. Yep, we're gonna go with Feisty. And our name, we have a very normal name. Let me just look at it real quick. Make sure I spell it right. Yep. Our name is Klesia. Which I think is actually an Adiran name. I got it off their wiki. But it's it's a name that exists in the world. So we'll go with it. I liked it. And there we go. We have Klesia. The fire god-like priest of Magran. Old Valian Drifter. I like it, and hopefully these the stat spread is fine. I think I probably could, if my memory's correct, I probably could have lowered con all the way and probably lowered perception or gone without one of these a little bit more or something like that. Um, hopefully we'll be okay. Um, from what I read, dexterity is the big one for spellcasters because it just means you can cast more spells, which is always nice, right? So, done. All right, let's start the game. Here we go. The caravan master finishes addressing the group. His bushy red mustache and sagging jowls quiver as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods towards a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight, everybody stays put, and in the morning, we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last, the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. So we're almost to Gilded Vale already. Touch of the rumbling rock, could be. There's a stinging beetle around here carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. In which case you'll be dead in a day. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker, but see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. Odema looks over his shoulder at his assistant, a lanky, intense man named Sparkle, who carries an old sun-bleached bow. He nods in your direction. Sparkle nods and slides the, the warm bow over his shoulder. Where would I find these ba berries? They grow on a bush that's common around here, kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. What are those ruins? Nothing you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn. So I hear. Your character's attributes, skills, class, race, culture, and sex may all open up options for you in dialogue. These options are not necessarily superior to the other responses, but give you a wider variety of choices to select from. The manner in which someone responds to your choice depends on their individual personality and attitude. Okay, who did build these ruins? Got different names for them. Settlers called them Ingwithans. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins tell you that much. Hmm. Is it dangerous out here? Not if you hurry about your business. And not if the weather holds up. There is concern in his tone. But he does not elaborate. What kind of weather do they get out here? This time of year? Rain, mostly. And wind. But there's a different kind of wind out here time to time. Locals call it a beowick, born out of the ether, 
The spirit's path. Never seen it myself. Never care to. A beer wick. What kind of weather did... Wait, no, I'll ask that. Uh, what are these huge rocks coming up out of the ground? They don't got Audra where you come from? Audra. Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. I don't. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. The soul butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. I'll go see about those berries then. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot. Not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. Fair enough. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy, armor-clad woman who has spent the journey night, journey's night sleeping on uneven ground without blanket or pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha! The woman looks up on her, on her own time. Kalisha. Uh, Caravan Master Odema? She needs to find some spring berries. Watch that she doesn't drop dead. No promises. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. Odema chuckles and shakes his head. He looks at you. And then casts a sidelong glance at her. Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. Adema, Adema's small grin recedes beneath his mustache, and he is stern once more. That's, you heard the man. Let's get going before you keel over. It's not foreshadowing at all, is it? Eh? Alright, so welcome to Pillars of Eternity. If this is your first visit to the world of Aora, you may want to watch these windows to become familiar with the tools and interfaces available to you. Your party always consists of your character and up to five additional companions or adventurers. While the caravan is camped outside Glam the Glamfathom ruins, Odema has assigned Kali Kalisha to help you. Kalisha is a fighter, a class that excels at close quarter combat or defense. Use her abilities to com complement your own. To select a party member, click on their selection circle. Boom. What you need? Their portrait. Boom. Yeah. Uh, or press the number button that corresponds to the position in the party, starting at one at the left. Just like multiple party members, click and hold anywhere and drag. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. To move selected characters, you click anywhere. Yep, yep. When multiple party members are selected, the action bar is hidden. Right, mm -hmm. this is the action bar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. So taking a look at us. Let's go ahead and take a look at us. This is the character sheet. We are Kalisa, or Klesia. <laughs> uh, we are first level priest, fire godlike. Abilities, first level priest spells. We also have battle forged. Right, so it requires endurance below 50%. Effect targets two burn damage, accuracy versus deflection, and plus four damage reduction on self. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, we also have Holy Radiance. So, friendly AoE plus 15.5 endurance. And there's the calculation. 15 plus 5 every three levels after first. Checks disposition. Right, and faux AoE. Only vessels. I don't know what a vessel is. 37.1 burn damage. Over 4.2 seconds. If successful, frightened for 21 seconds. Okay. We have second wind. One per encounter. Requires athletics one. Gets 25.8 endurance back. We have currently. Where is our endurance? Where does it show that stuff? We probably don't have a lot, do we? Oh, right here. 116 health and 29 endurance. That sounds like a lot. All right. So our first level spells. We have armor of faith. First level priest spell, speed advantage, uh, or average, 
Uh, range 5 meters, area of effect 3.7 ra meters radius. Does it tell me what affects this? No. Base is 2.5 though. It is a friendly AoE that gives damage reduction plus 4 for 42 seconds. Creates a tangible shield of faith, increasing the damage reduction of allies in the area of effect. Barbs of Condemnation. Uh, this is a target spell. Does 21 to 31 piercing damage. Minus 5 to all defense. And for 14 seconds. The, how does it happen every second? How does that work? Punishes a target for their sins, decreasing their deflection, fortitude, reflex, and will. We have Blessing. Plus 5 to accuracy and plus 10% to damage for our friends, so that's a buff. A call for divine favor that increases the accuracy and damage of, al of allies in the area of effect. We have Divine Terror. Frightened for 21 seconds. Strikes fear into the hearts of the unworthy, inflicting a penalty to accuracy on all enemies in the area of effect. Halt. Commands a single enemy to halt, causing them to temporarily cease all movements. That could be good. Holy Meditation. Uh, 30 concentration and 15 will. 42 seconds for everybody. Uh, the priest clears his or her mind, spreading that clarity to nearby allies, thereby increasing the concentration and will bonuses. And then we have Prayer Against Fear. Steal the mind of allies in the area of effect against all external fears, granting immunity to the frightened and terrified afflictions. That's pretty good. Restore Minor Endurance. So this is our heal. 12.4 Endurance. It's an AoE. Shows a portion of the caster's divine strength, restoring some of the health. All right. So I guess, I'm guess i guessing Might. Maybe we should have increased Might more. And Withdraw. Isolates a single target within a protective sphere, shielding them from harm while their endurance regenerates. Invisible for 28 seconds. 106 Endurance for 28 seconds. And Stasis Shield for 20... Eight seconds. Okay. Cool. So, do I need to pick those or anything? No, they're all right here. And I have two. I can cast two of them. Is that how that works? Okay. And then there's my Holy Radiance. It can only be used in combat. I think this is once per encounter. Yeah. And then once per encounter for second win, too. Okay. Eh? Tab highlights things. Good to know. We can unlock... Or let's go ahead and rob the camp blind, because that's what we do. We do have some gear here. The Obsidian Order is shrouded in mystery, with even the Hand Oculet having few clues about their origins. Some scholars have speculated that the Order's members are a diverse group from all over Aora, brought together by their love of exploration, fierce battle, and wondrous stories. Alright, I don't know why we have that. Let's get it. It's probably like a... I don't think I want any of those. I think that's all. Oh, this one actually has a blue outline. Gaunt's Pledge, two per rest. What does that do? Plus 15 endurance. That's actually not bad. We'll keep that because it actually does something. Maybe we'll get rid of it eventually, but I don't need any of the other stuff. I think that's all like. Yeah. I don't know. Just special stuff they gave. We did get a lock pick. So we can try and lock, unlock this. Let's try it. Perfect. 10 experience points. Doing great. Take that potion. That was a potion of minor endurance. Gives us 51.5 endurance back. It's pretty good. All right. Sure. Hello. Caravan life doesn't agree with you, does it? You look as raw as that merchant, Hyoden. Most people you encounter in the world are neutral friendly. You can interact with them by clicking. Yeah. Anyone need supplies? So this is Hyoden. You see a man wearing simple but mostly neat clothes. He's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. That's tough, buddy. Say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale if you'd like to take a look. I've got to read the rest of it. He, sh he shakes his head and laughs when he notices you. He scratches one cheek with his knuckle. Knuckles, it's covered with uneven stubble, as if he hasn't quite gotten used to shaving on the road. Who are you? I'm a trader. 
Originally from the Adir Empire, but I've been trying to establish new business out here. The life on the road has brought some unexpected challenges, to be sure. And I'm sure you've noticed how prickly the locals can be. But we're here to make the most of things, right? He looks at his wagon and grins ruefully. Uh, we might as well try. If I don't look like that, I'm sure you'll do well. If you think these caravanners are prickly, watch out for those axe-wielders axe wielders that Demma mentioned. How incredibly naive. Yeah, let's uh, watch out for those axe-throwers. Axe-wielders. He laughs. That's excellent advice indeed. You now have one re rank in disposition in a disposition reputation. How do I see that? Something else you need? Tell me, Looks like we're settled for the night. Tell me about the Adir Empire. It's not as big as it used to be, but it's still big. The mainland is a continent northwest of here, but the colonies used to include Rayad Saris and the Deerwood. About 150 years ago, Deerwood won its independence from the Empire. A fact our companions are quick to remind me of. He gives you a lopsided grin and nods at the other scattered caravanners. Why'd you move all the way out here? Because it seemed friendlier than Rayad Saris? <laughs> My brothers took over the family mercantile business a few years ago, and there wasn't enough for me to do back home. I moved out to try and expand. He shrugs. Direwood is a former Adir colony, so it seems like a good place to start. As much as I admire the Red Siren's work ethic, they've always struck me as a little fanatical. Sounds reasonable enough. So we are aggressive and clever. Sounds like you got the short end of the stick. I don't see it that way. He then begins restacking the crates in his wagon. My brothers and I are all working together for the sake of the family enterprise. I see what you got. Stores allow you to trade for copper coin pieces, yeah. So we can sell all this stuff. I don't know if any of that has money. One of them did. Looks like that had money. That's a little unfair that I get that, but I'll take it. Um, Weapon-wise, I don't actually know. Do we... What weapon would I use? I'm going to be on the back line, so I probably need some sort of ranged weapon. So maybe I'll get like a short sword or a hunting bow or something. Not a short sword, a short bow is my meant. Or a crossbow could be fun. 19 to 27 piercing. 10 to 15 piercing. But fast while that's slow. And we got war bow. I kind of want to be... Yeah, let's get a crossbow. I don't use crossbows very often in, in, on my main characters in games. It's always bows. Bows get all the love. Let's do that. We have... How much money? 212. Okay. Armor-wise, I actually don't know what armor we have. Can I see that? No. Nothing there. I can get a potion of minor regeneration. Some lockpicks. That's it. Let's just go with that for now. So, I'm going to equip that. I guess I can put that on the back. There we go. So I'm wear I'm wearing mail armor. That's probably pretty good. Okay, that's fine. You can switch to new weapon sets by selecting the weapon icon. Gotcha. Uh, let's head out. Let's go find find us some berries. It's berry hunting season. Now I remember this this first part of the game very well. Um, so I do know I'm going the wrong way right now, but. You know, I want to try and be even more thorough than I was in my first playthrough, which, admittedly, I didn't play the game super thoroughly. So I want to try and dive into the game a little bit better this time. Hopefully you guys will enjoy that too, exploring the, the lore of this world. Because Avowed's coming out too, pretty soon. Exploration is key in Pillars of Eternity. As you make your way through the Eastern Reach, open the area map. Yeah, there we go. I do like the map. Looks nice. Sparkle. I'll have your water soon enough. Stream's not going anywhere. Go get my damn water, man. Lazy bastard. Pick that up. Some admeth's wort. The path winds through a narrow canyon back to the way you came. Grooves in the road. You shouldn't stray too far. Okay. Grooves in the road mark the passage of hundreds of caravans. Alright. Let's take a look at our formation. I don't want to be in the front. Can I... Alright, 
follow me. Let's check by those outcroppings. What you need? There we go. We got a wolf there. Let's save it. Okay. Pillars of Eternity Combat uses a possible real-time system. Hmm? So you're gonna go in. Yeah. And I... Now these are... I don't want to use any of these yet. I don't remember if it said it's once per... I think it's once per encounter for now. Until we get higher level spells and more levels. So you'll just fire from back here. Nice. Classia hits a wolf for 17 piercing damage. Nice. All attacks do damage, right? One of your characters has been engaged in melee. Hmm. So we want to step up. And you're going to do this. Oh. What a waste. And we get it back, right? Yep, yeah, it went back. Good. Alright. This game's easy. Take that wolf skin. Alright. What do we have up here? This is it. So there's our berries. Drifter, you're kind of a mystery to the rest of the caravan. Just some kind of wanderer the way I hear it. That sort of thing tends to happen with orphans. Sure, I wander into the lives of fools, talk them out of their money, and wander back out. You have to be, you have to be when people are looking for you. That isn't your concern. Yes, yeah, that's, that's, people are looking for her. I don't know why, yet, but people are looking for her. You have to be when people are looking for you. Yeah? How is it you happen to come here? They think I have something that belongs to them. Something they're pretty intent on getting back. I crossed dangerous people. I couldn't stick around. I don't know why they're looking for me. I don't care to find out. I don't know why they're looking for me. Yet I don't care to find out. Well, we've all got things we'd like to leave behind. Gods know I do. I'll tell you that. Here's hoping they never track us down. Kalisha breathes in her surroundings. Been a long time since I've been this way. But I always did like it. Lord Re Lord Redrick Re Lord Redrick's offer makes a girl think. I'll give him that. Are we here to settle? Like the rest of the lot? No. I'm just passing through. That's usually the case with the big city just a little ways further up the road. Where are you headed? Nowhere special. Just putting as much time and distance between me and my old life as I possibly can. I'm going to continue on to the city. See what see where that takes me. I'll probably wander for a while. Somewhere I can make money. I have no idea what I'm do going to do next. Yeah, nowhere special. Just trying to put as much distance between me and my old life as possible. Seeing as we're halfway between nowhere and nothing, I'd say you picked the right spot. Anyway, I'm wasting time here. A demo give me an earful. Let's be on our way. Where are you from? Or why are you here? Kalisha sighs unevenly. Her eyes search the ground at her feet. My sister moved out here some time back. She sent me a letter. She seemed... Worried. But that's how she always is. This time, though, she asked me to come out. And that got me a little worried. I haven't seen her in ages. Been doing guide work in, in Zamet. But I'll do anything for her. She's... Well, she's a much better woman than me. So I'm here, and we'll see. Odema I've worked with before. He doesn't usually drive a route this way, but he's doing it for me. Tell me about yourself. I've got simple needs. I like open skies and far horizons. I find work and that lets me live that and that le I find work that lets me live that way. My family wanders too. We started in the Direwood, but my parents ended up in the living lands and I've got a brother in Rawatai. And another in a deer. My sister's in Gilded Vale. She's the only real home buddy. Homebody. Uh what can you tell me about the Direwood? I'm not much for history, but from what I know, it used to be part of the Deer Empire. It broke off after a war some years back. The locals here are feisty, and that's how they like it. I've been out of touch, but I've been hearing weird kinds of things about it lately. People having tr trouble giving birth, I guess. I guess. A lot of them. Been going on for years now, but somehow it's getting worse. 
With an uneasy tremor in her voice, she adds, I'll have to ask my sister more about it. All right, let's get back to camp. You know, I wouldn't hold my breath that Sparfle's getting you getting you water anytime soon. He does, he does what he feels like, when he feels like it. We should check up on him first. Slap him around a little. Stream's just down that way. Come on, let's get you some water. Get you your water. All right, let's go get some water. I like Kalisha. Yeah, I gotta work on making, I think I need to make my character a little more aggressive. Where can I see the dispositions of things? Yeah. Nope, oh, that's not. Personal? Mm, no. Do I, where do I see disposition? It's not in here. Wouldn't it be an inventory, right? That doesn't make sense. Journal, maybe? Quests. Got the Gilded Veil and a moment of, moment's respite. There's our journal. Got a biography. It's a rare thing for you to stay wherever you... In, stay anywhere for any length of time. You pass from town to town, moving on when it suits you. The open road, the, the closest thing you've had to a home. You hail from Old Velia, where you have moved from place to place in an effort to evade the people looking for you. But as to why they're looking for you, you have no idea. All you know is that you have you have to keep moving. You have decided to travel to the Gilded Vale in order to distance yourself from your old life. And it may not be long before you depart in order to further increase that distance. You felt ill, Ill traveling with a caravan bound for Gilded Vale. The caravan master sent you off with one of his gar guides, Kalisha, in search of a remedy. And then we got a cyclopedia and then notes. I can create some notes. That would be nice. There's the map. We get a stronghold. Options. No. I don't know where we see our uh, disposition. What you need? Let's keep moving for now. I'm going to get a little bit more done before we end the episode. For this first episode. I think there's something down here. Yeah. Travelers, maybe. Or looters. Or bandits. Bad sign any way you figure it. The corpse is cold to the touch, and a ripe smell wafts from it in, from it in putrid waves. A dark, crusted bloodstain besmirches its simple linen clothing. Some lockpicks. Okay. It's not good. Never good when you have dead people around, huh? Means something killed him. Uh, guessing it wasn't that wolf. What a surprise! Sparful went hunting. At least he left the water skins. Come on. This is recent. Not good. The footprints around the campfire are di indistinct and may have been here for days or longer. Beer. Pick up the water skin in a second. Okay. Let's pick it up. You crouch at the river bank and dip your water skin into the cool water where Kalisha waits nearby, keeping watch. As you rise, you notice her look up sharply toward the tree line. You've gained an item, quest, full water skin added to the stash. Out of the trees emerges Sparkle, one of the guides, barely discernible in the dim moonlight. He no longer carries his bow, and there is a strangeness to his gait. He stri his strided wobbly as he moves toward you with labored breath. Sparful, are you all right? Kalisha frowns. Sparful's toe catches on a rock and he collapses toward a heap, forward in a heap. The feathered shaft of an arrow planted between his shoulders like an enemy flag. That ain't good. Ambush. Uh oh. All right. What you need? You're gonna go after him, Kalisha. Hunter, Hunter. Okay, I think that one has a bow. So hmm. we're gonna attack them. Good. If 
fire and then do this. Oh, he's never mind. Move up. Both of you move up. Hmm. Come on. Damn. He's almost dead. Got him. Good. Come on, we have to get back to camp. Yeah, we gotta go tell Odima quickly. Okay, I got a couple more. You gonna go up to him? You yeah. shoot him. Cast. Hmm, I thought that did damage to people. Get up, Kalisha. She's doing all right. She's actually doing very good. They're missing. Good. Go ahead and knock him down. Nice. Good. Now about the fire. I miss. Good. All right. Now the battle over. Take all of that stuff. Move up. Take this stuff. Many spells and abilities of pillar have a limited number of use. Right. I knew that. All right. We can have fast mode and stuff too. And slow mode. Let's save it. Because that doesn't look good, does it? The camp. We're too late. All around you lie the massacred remains of the other travelers, peppered with arrows and knife hilts, splayed, splayed and bug-eyed and filthy. Kalisha puts the back of her hand to her mouth as if to ward away some poisonous vapor. A handful of dark figures stand above the fallen, fallen treading on limbs and backs and heads, jerking their axes from bodies as if from half-split logs. One of them, towering and severe, with a thick beard tasseled with knots, holds a wet blade at the neck of the man you recognize it as Hyoden, the last of your caravan left standing. Lay down your arms, trespasser. Do not forfeit this man's life for, for a fight you will lose. Why have you done this? You have trespassed in places of which no mortal man is worthy. You are trespassers and plunderers all, and we will see this outrage avenged. So I say again, lay down your arms. Don't trust them. They mean to kill us all. We are innocent in this. Will you not listen to reason? You can kill him, but you might as well be killing yourself. Athletics. Rush the man before he can act. Intellect. Judging by the string of animal teeth around your neck, uh, if Galloway told you to... S I'm guessing you are worshippers of Galloway. If Galloway told you to stop protecting the ruins, would you? Put down your weapon. Very well. Let him go. If I put my weapon down, we're all dead. Rush him. We're, we're aggressive. He shoves Hyodan toward you. As he does so, the man rakes his blade against Hyodan's torso. Hyodan screams and stumbles forward, a wide gash in his clothing beginning to bloom and bloom crimson. The man sets his feet to engage you, his axe raised high. Let him have it. Oh, Jesus, he is getting his ass kicked. Do that. Did I do damage there? Oh, there it is. Three hits. I can't tell. <laughs> Does he not have that ability? Or is it his injury? Almost got him. Good. We win. Your enemy lies supine on the ground, unable to rise. His companion is now silent among the other dead. His breath comes in wheezing, fitful gasps. He looks not at you, but at the sky above you. Forgive us. Barely audible beneath his choked sighs, a whisper of wind stirs the air. At this, the man's eyes roll back as he closes them. Good. Good. The gods are just. A queer smile crosses his face. 
I am ready. The wind begins to swell, whipping around the camp, electric and volatile, upending pots and rattling tents like an angry spirit. You can feel it begin to seep beneath your skin, and where it pierces you, it feels as though it is rending you apart from within. Seated against a wagon wheel amidst the howling maelstrom, slashed across the chest and bowel, Odema's body stirs, and with great effort he raises his sagging head, his eyes barely open. He looks directly at you. Get inside! Run! You run. Run for it! It's a bailwick! Or Beowick? I think it's called Beowick, not Beowick. Straining against a gale that threatens to pull you off of your feet with every step, you set your hands in the worn folds of weathered rock and set about pulling yourself up the precipice. With a last burst of energy before your arms give out, you swing yourself up on the ledge. Hailed and trails behind, slowed by, by injury and delayed by early hesitation. As he nears the face of the rock, Rox, one of the fallen attackers who had been feigning death, lunges at Hyoden and topples him onto the rocky ground. Restrained, Hyoden lashes out against his fatigued assailant, but struggles to break his hold. They are close to you. From your position, you would have a good chance of hitting your mark. Grab a rock and hurl it at the attacker. Dexterity 15. Your aim is true, and the hit jars Hyoden loose. Launching to his feet, Hyoden clambers up the base of the rock. As he nears the top, however, the, wind's fla the wind flares, pulling him sideways and tearing one of his hands free. But diving out onto the hard rock, you manage to catch hold of it, securing his other hand. You pull, you pull with waning strength, and it feels as though your arms will be jerked from their sockets. They hold, just long enough for Hilden to set his feet and join you on the trembling ledge. There's a deep resonance to the swelling wind now. You feel it in the rocks beneath your feet and inside the cavity of your own chest as though it would shake the marrow from your bones. Each new gust menaces the old stones before you, loosening connections, unsettling balances. As you dart beneath the old archway, the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight. Damn. Was that? A Beowick. Had to be. Hidden's words come between wheezing gasps. Then we're lucky to be alive. And we're the only ones. We can't stay here. There could be another collapse. We're not getting out that way anyway. Let's get further inside. Can you walk? Hidden's jaw tightens. He nods. All right. Um. That is where we're going to end this first episode, guys. I think that's a good spot to end it. Uh, I really like the, the intro to this game. I've always really liked this first little sequence. Uh, I think it's a really good introduction, really good tutorial to the game and its mechanics and all that. Um, but yeah, uh, as we get further along, I'll start, I'll start misremembering things. But I hope you guys are excited to see... Uh, I already forgot my name. Where Clesia's story leads us. And uh, until the next episode, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you later.